If you want to play guitar fast, one of the most important skills you have to practice is two-hand synchronization. Because if your hands are not in sync when you try to play fast, then it doesn't matter at what speed you can wiggle the pick and wiggle your fingers, your guitar playing overall will still sound like when you try to play fast. So today I'm going to give you five of my favorite guitar practice tips for getting your hands in tighter sync even if you don't have a lot of time to practice. Let's go. The first thing you can do to get your hands in tighter sync is to simply get more volume out of the notes and I don't mean turning the amp up I mean getting more acoustic pick attack when you hit the strings and you can do this one of two ways one you can simply hit the notes harder or you can dig the pick deeper inside of the strings when you play or you can do some combination of the two now why is that important well two reasons first when you hit the notes harder with the pick or you use more of the pick to hit the strings you are forced to slow down to what I call your threshold of control with two hand synchronization this is the fastest speed you can play with your hands still being in sync because it's physically impossible to hit the notes really hard and not have your hands be in sync. Your synchronization will either fall apart or you'll be forced to slow down to the fastest speed where your hands are still in sync which is that threshold of synchronization control that I just mentioned. A great way to practice this is to simply turn off your amp and just play unplugged. You can do this with a simple scale. And you see how I'm hitting the notes pretty hard and this forces me to keep my hands in sync. The other reason this is important is by hitting the notes harder, you're building a lot of strength in your forearm and in your wrist for picking. And what that does is when you turn distortion back on and you are now not required to hit the notes with anywhere near as much power, you're maybe only using like 25% or less of your overall strength reserve, you're now able to keep your hands in tighter sync because overall your playing feels easier. It's just like learning to bench press 300 pounds when you previously could only bench 250 and now benching 150 pounds feels a whole lot easier because you're just way stronger overall. Now the caveat to this is you have to keep your fretting hand relaxed while you do this. So even if you're hitting the notes harder, your fretting hand should not start squeezing the strings harder in response. Your feet should not curl up in your shoes and get tense because of that. Your jaw should not get tense. You should only be relying on the power in your picking hand, but keep the rest of your body relaxed. If you need some help with doing that, check out my video tutorial on how to train for hand independence. You can check it out right here. I go over a simple drill that I have for this that's gonna help you develop this skill. The second way to get your hands in sync is to practice double picking. And just like the name implies, you pick every note of an exercise you're working on two times. For example, you can take any scale and instead of just playing it up and down, you pick every note of it twice, like this. And you can do the same thing with arpeggios, only in the case of arpeggios you will probably be better off picking every note three times so you maintain the same picking direction on the way down and on the way up, so it's going to sound like this. This is a regular arpeggio. Now triple picking. Now why is double or triple picking such an effective way to get your hands in sync? Well, very simple. Usually when you play licks, you're only doing one action with the picking hand for every one action with the fretting hand finger. Of course, I'm not including legato in this conversation. We're talking about picking every single note here and getting your hands in sync for those types of licks. But when you introduce double picking, you throw that into the mix. Now your picking hand has to do two actions for every one action that your fretting hand does. And this makes synchronization artificially harder temporarily and exaggerates the difficulty of it. So when you go back to regular playing, it all of a sudden feels easier and your hands are able to stay in sync much better. That's why this works. Double picking can be a great warm-up exercise you do for just a few minutes per day to warm up your hands, or you can make a longer practice session out of it for 10, 15, or maybe even 20 plus minutes. But any way you do it, it's going to improve your synchronization, guaranteed. The next idea is to lean into your threshold. Now, I talked about threshold of control in idea number one, where I said you just want to get more volume out of the notes, but the threshold is really, really important, and I want to talk about this in more detail. Now, most of the time when you have any kind of problem in your playing, people tell you to just slow down and to practice slowly. And this advice is often incomplete and actually does more harm than good. Because if you slow down too much, now your playing becomes simply too easy. And maybe the problem you struggle with before at a higher tempo 
doesn't even appear at slow tempos. So now you're just wasting your time doing something that's way too easy that's not challenging you at all. On the flip side, if you don't slow down enough, then your hands are just out of control. Now your playing is sloppy, your hands are not in sync anymore, and you can't do anything because you're playing too fast. So what you want to do is you want to find the threshold of control and you want to lean into it. You want to find the fastest tempo where you can keep your hands in sync and you don't want to go much faster than maybe five beats per minute above it and five beats per minute below it. That's what I mean by leaning into your threshold. You practice at this narrow range of tempos where you can kind of still keep your hands in sync and sometimes it's a little bit on the easy side, sometimes it's a little bit outside of your comfort zone, but you're always practicing with your brain engaged 100% of the time because you're practicing in that red zone of the threshold that you're leaning into the whole time. And as your hands get tighter in sync, your threshold is going to move up and the tempos around it are going to adjust with it. That is how you gradually increase your synchronization skills. The next way to get your hands in sync that I like a lot, and you can do this one without the metronome if you want, is to do more single string practice. Now, when you play scales, typically you are going to be changing strings every two or three notes on each string. And if your synchronization breaks down a little bit, let's say on string six, when you switch to string five, you have another chance to start over and get your hands back in sync. And this happens on every string, of course. But when you're playing on one string, then if your hands get out of sync, it's really, really obvious that your synchronization just broke down. So the more you can practice on one string, the more you're going to isolate this two-hand synchronization component because you have no nowhere to go. You have no other way to reset your synchronization. You're simply either in sync or you're not. So one really easy thing you can do on one string is just isolate any three notes from any major or minor scale, maybe like this. 12, uh, frets 12, 13, and 15, and create a little repeating sequencing pattern, maybe like this. And just see how fast you can play it with these same three notes and find your maximum speed with keeping your hands in sync. And in this case, the faster you play this lick, the better it's gonna sound. And once you get more advanced, then you can move this up and down the entire fretboard from the first fret all the way up to the final fret using any major or minor scale fingering you want, for example. So find your threshold of control with any of these licks and apply the previous strategies from hitting the notes with more power, getting more volume out of the notes, practicing unplugged, double picking, and that is going to get your hands even more in sync because you're applying them to licks that are inherently more challenging for your synchronization to begin with. And finally, on a related note, you can alternate fretted notes on one string with open strings on the same string. Here are a few examples. <laughs> Here's one more. So there's all kinds of patterns you can create. You can sit there all day and be creative and experiment, provided of course you know your scales in one string really well. The better you know them, the better it's gonna be and the more fun you're gonna have. But in any case, any of these patterns are going to greatly improve your synchronization because they leave you no choice but to get your hands in tight sync. And the reason why alternating fretted notes and open strings in one string improves your synchronization is exactly the same as what I said earlier about double picking. That's because when you're disrupting the regular flow of one action with the pick, one action with one of the fretting hand fingers, now your synchronization is seriously tested. Because when you go back to fretting a note after playing an open string right before it, it's sort of like jumping on a moving treadmill. And if your synchronization is not perfectly tight, it's gonna become very, very obvious. So the more you practice these drills, the more your hands are gonna be forced to get in sync. You can apply these two hand synchronization drills into your practicing in all kinds of different ways. You can take one of them and just practice it for five minutes or 10 minutes, or you can create a little mini circuit of it and you can take all five and you practice a 30 minute 
two hand synchronization session where you rotate between all of them for five minutes each or six minutes each, whatever it comes out to be. And this is going to be a really effective way to practice that's going to make you a cleaner, faster, and more accurate guitar player. And if you want more tips for how to build guitar speed, specifically how to do it without doing any slow practice, hit the link below or go to the page that's on the screen right now and I'm going to show you a one hour masterclass called Guitar Speed Formula. What it is, is a way to build guitar speed without the whole song and dance of starting slow and gradually building up speed in small increments because, you know, who the hell wants to do that? But if you want to know a better way, that different way, that's probably not something you've ever tried before, hit the link below, enter your email address, I'll send it right over to you for free. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you're notified every time I upload new videos just like this for you. This is Mike Filipov, guitar practice expert from practiceguitarnow.com. I'll see you next time.